nine cricketers. Fantastic players. Don Bradman, Greg Chappell, George Headley, Wally Hammond, Brian Lara, Graham Pollock, Viv Richards, Sachin Tendulkar, Frank Worrell. Richie is uh, sitting alongside me. Who did he go for? I went for Bradman and I think he was an obvious choice. And uh, then I went for Richards and Tendulkar. Bradman, Richards, Tendulkar and I would love to be in charge of a side in which they were taking part. You say that uh, Don Bradman was obvious, but uh, Viv Richards and Sachin Tendulkar, they were pretty good players to contend oh. with them. Why did you pick them particularly? Well, there's such a choice there, and those nine names, you could really have had, uh, with Bradman, as a certainty, uh, two others uh, in any grouping at all, because they're all magnificent players. And uh, Richards, I think uh, a supreme entertainer, just absolutely wonderful to watch, and I've been lucky that uh, I coincided with uh, his era. Tendulkar, from the moment I first saw him when he came to Australia way back when Shane Warne made his debut, that's how long ago mm. it was, I've uh, regarded him as uh, one of the great players I've ever seen. Well, what's interesting is that your votes coincide exactly with uh, Richie's choices. 30% go for Don Braddon. 20, uh, as good as 21% for Viv Richards and 21% for Sachin Tendulkar. Brian Lara next on the list with 13% and some of the older folk uh, not remembered by perhaps a younger audience these days. And interestingly, your favourite combination, if uh, you'd voted for those as uh, a threesome to bat in the middle order, was also Bradman, Richards and Tendulkar. So uh, that's where we are with uh, the team. A reminder, we've got Sunil Gavaskar and Jack Hobbs opening the batting. Then uh, Don Bradman at three, Viv Richards at four and Sachin Tendulkar at five. This week we're going to move into uh, the all-rounders and also the wicket keepers. We've got some all-rounders from which uh, Rich is going to pick two all-rounders in his side and one of three wicket keepers. So uh, who have we got first? Well, uh, the reason behind this is uh, I wanted one, I wanted two all-rounders in all, but uh, I was going for different types of all-rounders. Now, Ian Botham is um, the first one. Botham's match. Yeah, the 1981 ahead of me. You've always said that was uh, your favourite game. Well, favourite game on which to commentate, and Jim Laker said the same thing. We both reckoned it was uh, absolutely magnificent to watch. Ian Botham, he destroyed Australia in that series. The Australians uh, made England follow on, and uh, in that game, it was just fearsome stuff he produced. And uh, England uh, booked out of their hotel on the fourth morning. Yeah, well, of course, I, one of the greatest match winners, at more than 5,000 runs, 383 test match wickets, a breathtaking all-rounder in the true sense of the word. Your next choice, uh, Richard Hadley, probably a stronger bowler than batsman. Yes, I think he was, and uh, he set himself, uh, he was a tearaway at the start of his career, Richard Hadley, and he settled down and uh, then became a magnificent swing and seam bowler and wonderfully accurate. He worked out exactly what he wanted to do and uh, he turned himself into a fine bowler. Uh, batting, he was still good. But uh, I thought he was a bowling all-rounder rather than the batting all-rounder. Knighted in, uh, in 1990, became Sir Richard and was the first man to take 400 test match wickets. Uh, we move into uh, the line of Lahore next. Uh, what a player. He was... Uh, I, I saw him when he first came into uh, test match cricket and he batted and bowled in moderate fashion for about a year. And then suddenly he hit his straps and uh, he was a terrific player. And he led Pakistan, which is not always the easiest thing in the world to do. He wouldn't uh, mark it down as uh, number one on uh, your list of uh, desires. They can be uh, quite a difficult time, uh, side to lead. And he did it and pulled them all together, won the World Cup and won Test Series. He was there, bowling brilliantly when Pakistan beat Australia for the first time in Australia. Wonderful play. Yeah, and uh, 362 wickets, an average of 22 with a ball, would have made him a candidate as uh, a bowler alone. Now, this was an era, Richie, where there were four great all-rounders all playing at the same time. Fancy being a commentator and having that, because you could get one all-rounder, one great all-rounder, and mark yourself down as being very, very lucky to get four in the same era running through the uh, 1970s and 80s and that was after Gary Sobers had, uh, had retired. Kapil Dev here, who made uh, more than 5,000 runs. Uh, similar sort of figure to Ian Botham there. 434 
test match wickets, but his batting, really, this, he avoided the follow-on for India here with four consecutive sixes off Eddie Hemmings at Lords. 24 they needed, and we cheered the first six, and <laughs> we just laughed when the fourth <laughs> one uh, went straight into those covers at the uh, nursery <laughs> end. It was wonderful stuff, but as I say, wonderful opportunity to be a commentator when four of them were in action at the same time. Yeah, well, the modern era, really, with Botham and Hadley and Imran and Kabul Dev. And then we go back to the time that you came into the side and the hero of yours, Keith Miller. Keith Miller, I always reckoned, was the best all-rounder with uh, whom I played or uh, played against. And that, therefore, included the time we first saw Sobers. But Miller was a wonderful player. Lovely bowling action. They said at times, those who batted against him, that he was faster than uh, Ray Lindwall just when he wanted to be, and uh, he could have got into the side for his batting as well. So he was a wonderful player, and Sobers, uh, later on, dominated the all-round things, but uh, Miller, he was my hero, alongside... And, and, um, and a wartime bomber pilot, too, so he was a hero. And there's a great line here, I must read. Once asked why he played in such a carefree manner, he replied that anyone who ever had a Messerschmitt up his backside would uh, greatly enjoy the prospect of playing cricket for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gives you a fair idea of the cavalier approach of uh, Keith Miller, and then the great cavalier of all, the West Indian Sir Garfield. Yeah, he was uh, he was brilliant. He was uh, in the West Indian side 53-4, and then we went over there in 55. So it was the first time I saw him, and gosh, he could play. He was only 19, just turned 19 then, and uh, wonderful player. Quite brilliant. Uh, also, to remember that he was a marvellous fielder. I mean, his close catching, as we alluded to a couple of weeks ago. Field anywhere. Those catches we showed a couple of weeks ago where he was lurking in the batsman's hip pocket and uh, taking catches just around the corner is a uh, wonderful player to watch. And bowling as well. He could bowl three different types orthodox left arm spin, over the wrist spin, mm. and then he could bowl late swingers. As uh, we showed, I think he was knocking over Jeffrey uh, with one Surely enormous not. swinger. Surely not. And always with a smile on his face. Now, I mentioned that uh, Imran Khan could have got him to side as a bowler alone. Well, Gary Sobers made more than 8,000 runs at an average of all but 58. So he could have got in as a batsman alone. Now, what we're doing is picking two all-rounders. Richie has decided he wants two of those cricketers in his side. So bear that in mind. We now move on to uh, the wicket keepers. And English cricket supporters won't be pleased. Well, they may not be. But uh, two of the finest keepers I ever saw were uh, Godfrey Evans, against whom I played in uh, the early times when I came over here, and uh, Alan Knott. Uh, but uh, I've actually gone for... I don't think I can be accused of being uh, too much Australian in the nominations I've produced no, so can't. far. But here, it may be, because the three I've gone for are Adam Gilchrist, Rodney Marsh and Ian Healy. And Gilchrist, I mean, an extraordinary athlete, really. You'd probably pick him as, as a good stand backer to the stumps and a brilliant batsman. Bear in mind that I am saying, and have said all the way through, that this is the team I want to be in charge of. So I want to sit there, perhaps with a glass of Chardonnay in my hand in the pavilion watching it, and I want to be entertained. All right, well, you'll be entertained by uh, Adam Gilchrist and uh, Ian Healy, who kept wicket at Shane warm when he began bowling into the rough stuff. Very, very good. Those, uh, those three fellows, Gilchrist was a wicketkeeper before he became a batsman. Uh, he couldn't get into the New South Wales side as keeper, so he went across to Perth, walked into their side and walked into the Australian side, and he's been there ever since as uh, the number one keeper. Rodney Marsh was in the Ian Chappell era, and uh, Ian Healy, a wonderful keeper, acrobatic against pace, but brilliant against Shane Warne. Absolutely brilliant. I, I, I want to, I'll come back to Gilchrist just for a second because he got his test match runs as fif, at 52 apiece. Rod Marsh didn't get him at quite such a good average, but Rod Marsh was a thrill to watch with the bat too. Oh, yeah. They're, they're all, and Healy, in his own way, uh, he wasn't as dynamic as either uh, Gilchrist or Marsh, but uh, still in his own way, was a very, very useful batsman. And, and he made his name standing back to Lillian Thompson. Here's Jeff Thompson bowling, and there's a catch and a half to begin with. Well, Rodney, in those days of uh, long hair, this was in uh, the time when Lily with the long hair also and Jeff Thompson with the most beautiful, fluent action were uh, giving England and other countries, Clive Lloyd's side in 75, 6 in Australia, a pretty tough time. So Rodney was part of that, uh, but uh, it's just a choice of uh, one from three. Well, you've had a tough time. Let's remind ourselves of that list because there's no Englishman amongst the wicket keepers. Ian Botham, Richard Hadley, Imran Khan, Kapil Dev, 
Keith Miller and Garfield Sobers. They're uh, the all-rounders. We're looking for two of those, which he's chosen, chosen I should say, two in his uh, all-time team. And then one of Adam Gilchrist, Ian Healy and Rodney Marsh, though uh, an honourable mention went to uh, Godfrey Evans and also to Alan Knott.